Hello and welcome back to the Challenge War of the Words podcast. I'm Drew Angelman, also known as Angel Cake, and I'm your host. And we got some fun stuff to talk about. We're first going to bring up the major update that has happened for the Challenge 38. Sounds like they had started production already and started filming because we hear from various sources starting with challenge t 911 posting to their instagram story saying that filming has paused with the challenge 38 and that players have been given their phones again we saw the same post happen on vebmo on may 28th 2022 at 2 47 pm pink rose stated that the cast has been back in quarantine since thursday and will be there for the next few days and then gamer vev took to twitter stating that the cast is back in quarantine due to somebody testing positive for COVID. They're scheduled to resume filming on Tuesday, which is the Tuesday that this podcast is dropping, which is May 31st. I knew something was afoot because there was a lot of people on Friday before I went live with Chris and Chantel on Chris and Chantel's channels talking about the Challenge All-Stars 3. There was a lot of people and a lot of speculation of what was going on. Everybody who was anybody was on Vevmo, who was on Twitter, on Instagram, was clocking people who were supposedly on the cast who have been away from their phones for a couple of days now. We're like, how is Johnny liking certain posts that were recently put up by people if he's supposedly on the challenge and they took his phone away? The same thing with Jay, the same thing with Nelson. Everybody was like worried or speculating that a lot of players were getting dropped. Uh, But come to find out, they are back into quarantine because somebody tested positive. Uh, So that makes a lot of sense. Uh, But you have to speculate, like, what is happening with the Challenge 38? This season is probably not going to be coming out until September or October. Does this second quarantine start delaying things or pushing the release date back Or did they give themselves enough cushion to where they can still film and have that set release date, which is going to be probably mid-September, early October? I think that they would give themselves that cushion because this is something that happened last season. Last season, they had gone through the beginning of the challenge and then had to go back into quarantine and then sort of had to restart the whole game again. I feel like they learned from last season, hopefully. I don't know, maybe not. (laughs) It takes a little while for the challenge to actually start like picking up on certain things. And some things they haven't picked up on uh, in recent years or at all. But you would think that when it comes to the scheduling and production that they would have built in just in case scenarios for a second quarantine. So I don't think that this will delay much, especially with the probably less restricted COVID protocols that they have in place now that Probably everybody is already vaccinated, boosted up, and then is on the season and that they could have like a quicker turnaround than say when the Challenge 37 was filmed. Hopefully they don't have another setback. At least this happened quite a bit early in this filming or production wise of the Challenge 38. But I just wanted to bring it up that this is the biggest news that we have so far. I've been checking Vevmo, Gamer Vev tweets. So while editing this podcast, I went over that there was no new cast news via Gamer Vev or Pink Rose. But on Monday, May 30th at 4 p.m., I was alerted the news that there was two more rookies added to the Challenge 38 cast. One of which is Kim Tronka and Colleen Schneider, both from Germany reality TV shows Kim Tronka is from a TV show called Prince Charming from German TV series, which is a show that is modeled after The Bachelor, but with gay men, and instead of having a rose ceremony, it features a black tie ceremony. This is from the Prince Charming German TV series Wikipedia page. So Kim Tronka was the prince looking for his Prince Charming, and uh, Tronka and Schmitz We're still together as of the reunion episode in October of 2021, so good for him. I'm glad a TV show uh, worked out because apparently in the first two seasons, uh, the princes did not stay together. So happy to hear that he is still with his Prince Charming, and they are both each other's Prince Charmings. Colleen Schneider 
was on the German version of The Mole in 2020, and she was the titular character of The Mole, and she got pretty far into the game. I guess she can game the system, lie to people, maybe get far with those lies in the game when it comes to the challenge. And uh, maybe Kim and Colleen know each other and will be ride or dies with each other on the show. I haven't really found any connections with them, so I don't know if they're going to be alternates or if, say, Colleen is going to be with Nam and Kim is going to be with Emmy, or maybe they'll be partnered up together. Kim and Colleen are going to be paired up together. We don't know. Maybe they aren't even on the season. Like I said, maybe that they're going to be alternates. Uh, but that's the most news we have on the cast and the the changes of the cast as of Monday, May 30th, that one, the game has been paused since last Thursday and will be starting back up on Tuesday, May 31st, and that Kim Tronka from Prince Charming German TV series and Colleen from The Mold Germany has been added to the Challenge 38. But that's all the news I have for the Challenge 38 at the moment. Let's jump into the meat and potatoes of this podcast, and that is the possible shade that Tyson has thrown at the Challenge USA, which is formerly known as the Challenge CBS. Tyson, for those who don't know, Tyson is a Survivor player. He's a four-time Survivor player. He won on season 27, Blood vs. Water, his third season playing, and he was on Winners at War. He is on the cast for the Challenge USA that is going to be premiering very soon. I'm sure if you watch Survivor or any CBS show the past few weeks, they've been putting out those promos saying like, hey, watch out, the Challenge USA is coming up soon. TJ is walking in the field. They're showing super quick clips and teasers of all the different daily challenges and possible eliminations. Really can't see anything going on in those trailers, so I haven't done any breakdowns, but I was watching the Survivor finale. I saw the trailer and teaser a couple of times, and I have to admit it was looking pretty cool. Some of the daily challenges that we got to see in that quick little 30 second teaser and trailer. However, on Tyson's podcast that he has with the Ringer Network, which is called The Pod Has Spoken, he took to air with his co-host and Parvati talking about the Survivor 42 finale that just happened, and it sounds like he takes a couple of pop shots at the Challenge USA, formerly known as the Challenge CBS. I have the clip. Let's take a listen to it, and we can talk about it after I play this clip. So here we go. Let's go into it. Riley, I've been harping on Survivor for the last, like, three or four episodes where every single challenge has been, like, balance where it's just like, okay, on your marks, get set, hold as still as possible, and don't move and don't drop a thing. And it's been like that for weeks on end. But I like these station challenges that are like obstacles and and then it ends in the sure it ends in a puzzle. I that's the great equalizer. It's either balance is an equalizer or the puzzle and I agree with that. But this and this challenge, the second we got it, I was like I take back everything I said about all the balance ones coming up. This challenge is awesome. And I'm telling you as the listeners right now no matter what show I ever may find myself on in the future, years and years down the road, whenever, on whatever network, doesn't even matter. Survivor Challenge Team is the best at building and putting together and creating sick challenges when they need to. Riley, this sounds like a mystery clue, doesn't it? No, not at all. I'm just telling you. Riley, any other <laughs> challenge show you can think of, Survivor does it bigger, better, and more proficient and more professional than any other crew out there. Any other challenge show I can think of. All right, I'll have to give that some thought, and I'll, um, we'll, I'll think about whether you're right, at least from the viewer's perspective or not. Yeah, any challenge I mean, show. the huh. challenge looked gorgeous. The set was amazing. The little teeny like things they had to go through were great. Uh, the way they cut it together was awesome. I've played these types of challenges in the past, and they're awesome. And it came down to a single puzzle piece. It couldn't have gone any better. I love when the puzzle's like vertical, too. You can kind of see the progress, like physically moving upward, and they have to like keep it all together. It's better than when it's a tabletop puzzle. Those yeah. are really hard. Too. No other show yeah. could do a vertical puzzle like that. It's incredible. <laughs> 
I love it. I feel like you guys are having a secret conversation. We're not. We're not at all. (laughs) I'm just telling you that this challenge was dope. I commend Survivor and everybody that works there. And with so many moving parts on a challenge, it is it could be easy to have it fail somewhere. But these guys test and test and test and test and make sure there's no failures anywhere ever. And so like they test the challenges. There are no failures on the challenges almost ever. And with so many moving parts and so many different ranges of talents of competitors, uh, it really is an incredible feat that they can build something like that time and time again. So we heard from that clip, Tyson talking about how he has on his podcast, I I don't listen to it regularly, but on that, on his podcast, he has talked about and criticized the survivor challenges from the season, saying that they were mostly balance-based, which I will agree with that. I agree with him that they were a lot of balance-based challenges on this past Survivor season, but then once seeing the challenge where they had the uh, giant course with all different ways to grab the puzzle piece and then had to construct a giant standing puzzle that he quickly turned around and was like, this is awesome, this is incredible, Survivor does it best. Survivor does challenges best. And then he proceeds to go on and say, well, whatever show I may go on, no matter what network, No matter what challenge-based show, Survivor does it best. And continuously states in different ways, and I love the second portion where he goes, think of any challenge-based reality show, and I will say that Survivor puts together the best challenges. And what really sells this as a pop shot to the challenge and the Challenge USA (laughs) is that the challenge is just known as the challenge. So he doesn't even have to like be any more clear or any more specific when saying, oh, think of another challenge-based game show and I'll throw it out there that that Survivor is the best one out there. So whatever show I may find myself on in the future, just know that the challenge does it best. And everybody, oh my gosh, this, he is not trying to be subtle here. And even Poverty calls it out, being like, it feels like you're trying to say something. And Tyson's just like, no, 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 no. I'm not trying to say anything. I'm just letting everybody know, especially you, Riley, my co-host, that whatever show I may find myself on, think of any challenge-based show, and I'll say that Survivor does it best. And then he goes into even more of a description of why Survivor is best with these challenges, saying that, oh, they meticulously test over and over and over again, making sure that the challenge itself isn't too difficult, despite having their players range in all different degrees, whether it is uh, the, the weight, the size, the height, age of the competitors, they could still do the competition. And it's funny when he says that because we have seen on the past couple of seasons of the challenge, we've seen players having to DQ from certain challenges. We've seen them DQ from the water being too cold. We can think of Michi in season 36, Double Agents, in Ice Spy, I believe. Also in season 35, when the pool was too cold, when Nelson and Kayla's group had to go into the pool and had to grab all the puzzle pieces from Cold War, and they had to DQ. It's kind of like, okay, did we really test this out? Or or even Nanisa being DQ'd from last season after falling off of the wall. She had to be DQ'd from not just that challenge, but the whole season because she injured herself and had to be taken off in uh, the hospital. I think of season 31 vendettas with the cars where they made it rain on the cars and you had to go from one platform to the other with all the cars and Leroy gets knocked out. And majority of the players don't even want to try it because Nelson and Zach had glass all up and down their legs after they made it across and nobody really wanted to do it. They took hard hits. They fell into the water hard. So thinking of the challenge USA and hearing Tyson's words, it's making me nervous that possibly we could see people being either medically DQ'd or unable to do certain challenges because they're just unable to complete it. Or he doesn't think that the challenge has done the fair job 
when doing these challenges that they've fully tested them out to make sure that they are able to be completed by everybody on the cast. And when hearing this clip from Tyson, it made me think back to a screenshot that was sent to me. Now this screenshot has many layers to it. It was a screenshot of the Challenge Shade Room's Instagram story, which posted a screenshot of GamerVev's tweets. So GamerVev tweeted at one point saying, I heard that production for the Challenge CBS, now the Challenge USA, was extremely unorganized and that they were unprofessional as hell treating the cast terrible. Then the next tweet states, majority of the cast disliked production because production kept threatening to DQ them because they would act how they wanted. In return, some cast also was threatening to quit. It was a mess. This is something that you do not want to hear about a TV show that one that you like and are wanting to watch it and see how well they can do with it. And two, that this is the one of four to five spinoffs that we are getting on the year. And to hear that I think the Challenge CBS or the Challenge USA was the first one to film and just how terrible it seems like it was on the back end of things. I'm sure they're going to clip it and edit the way they can to make it seem like a smooth production, to make it seem like everything was all good and dandy. But reading those tweets from Gamer Vev solidifies what I thought was happening with the challenge when they decided to just drop the news on us just randomly one night and one afternoon stating that, hey, we're going to drop four spinoffs and a tournament style game this year. This Within a year, we're going to get all of this out. We haven't heard anything about any of this when it was dropped on us to where it's like, did we think this through all the way? Like, what, how did this come to be? You kind of just threw this out there. The name is a name that we've already had on two previous seasons of the challenge, the challenge war of the world. And now flip it. And they came out with a press conference or a statement, I think about a month ago, stating that they already changed the name to instead of war of the world to now like global championships or world championships instead of War of the Worlds Tournament. And then before they threw out the teasers and the trailers, we see that they changed the name from the Challenge CBS to the Challenge USA, which fits the theme a bit more because how the heck do you have the Challenge CBS going up against the Challenge Australia, the Challenge UK, the Challenge Argentina, and then you have a network going up against them. So they changed it to the Challenge USA. To me, I'm not surprised to hear that on the back end, it was disorganized. I felt when they announced all of this information in the four seasons and the tournament style and the names of everything, I just thought that they hadn't thought everything out yet. I think that they were rushing into everything and seeing all the different changes that have happened ever since they announced and hearing the back end from the tweets from Gamer Vev from hearing now Tyson talking about the challenges and kind of taking pop shots at the Challenge USA, it solidifies that this is going to be a mess. And what I'm the most excited about is one, seeing how this all transpires. I am gonna be covering the season. I'm gonna be watching it intently, going over everything. But I'm also going to be very excited to hear from the players that aren't interested on being on the challenge MTV or being on another season of the challenge, or they're kind of just like, ah, it's, it's done and over. I did it. I tried it out, but now let's move on to doing something else. I'm going to be intrigued to hear their interviews and what they have to say about their experiences on the challenge USA, formerly known as the challenge CBS, because that's what I want to hear. It already sounds like it's not going to be the most well put together season, the most thought out. I think that they had put themselves in a corner by their announcement that they did, stating that they were gonna do it all in one year when they could have really decided to take their time with it. And the crazier part about it is that it's all gonna be filmed in one location. I think they're gonna do the same challenges on the same like episodes for all of it, for the whole series, so that it's 
more one-to-one. You can compare and contrast like how uh, USA players did against Australia, UK, and uh, Argentina. But if USA had this terrible experience, and then you're learning as you go on through the different spinoffs, I mean, are we gonna see a level of quality or professionalism come through on say the last spinoff that you do compared to the USA who has gotten the like the guinea pig treatment and experience? I don't know. I don't know what to make of all of this. I think it's going to be a hot mess behind the scenes or it sounds like it was already a hot mess behind the scenes and now we're just waiting for the edit. And this news is gonna drop very, very soon. Like the cast I expect to drop in the next few weeks. And then I've heard through the grapevine that the Challenge USA will be starting in July, probably around the same time as Big Brother is gonna be starting, Big Brother 24. I just don't think that this was fully thought out. And to hear how much of a mess it is on the back end is not gonna help the long-term fans jump into the show. I think everybody who has watched the show for years on MTV, who are long-term fans, and who was already skeptical about this whole spin-off news and hearing that it's all about the Challenge CBS and Big Brother players, Survivor players, Love Island players, Amazing Race players, all three of them, that this was gonna be their own show. I think we were already skeptical going into it, and now hearing about all the back end stuff and even criticisms coming before the show even begins, I think is just not gonna help the show gain any traction with the long term fans. I'm thinking there's gonna be a lot of new fans that are gonna check this out because it is gonna be on CBS, not MTV. And it's most likely gonna come out on a day of the week where it's gonna be able to follow the Big Brother where probably millions of people watch or maybe a million or a couple hundred thousand will watch that week and be able to just follow it right into the Challenge USA and they'll check it out and maybe it'll gain some traction there. But hearing the mess that this is behind the scenes, I just don't have high hopes for it. I'm still gonna watch it, I'm still gonna cover it, I'm still gonna try to be as judicial as possible when watching the show, talking about the level of competition, the games and everything, I'm not gonna be here to just try to bash it into the ground. I wanna come at it as like I'm watching a normal challenge season and I'm just talking about it. Cause there are some people on this cast that I really like and I really wanna root for, like Tyson, like uh, all the Survivor players essentially and some of the Big Brother players and uh, maybe one or two of the Love Island players. I'm looking forward to watching and kind of like seeing like, oh, maybe this could be like a proving ground for the next couple of seasons of the challenge. Maybe they're like trying to get some new people and maybe this could be a fun way to see who's got the chops to possibly make it onto the MTV and who doesn't. But my goodness, I have a feeling that the editing team who is going through all these episodes are gonna have some time just going through all the editing stuff and being like, all right, let's cut up this, let's uh, try to make this flow, let's try to make this look good, try to make this make sense kind of thing, Frank and biting uh, all the different clips in the confessionals to make it sound like one smooth episode, one smooth arc. So give it up for everybody who edits on these shows. They have to go through like 100,000 hours of raw footage and have to make it go into one continuous arc and one continuous story from the beginning of the season to the very end. So shout out to them. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna look forward to watching this season, if anything, trying to just pick up on the mess a little bit. But also, I just have to throw this out there. Another thing that makes me feel like they didn't really think this out is seeing the Challenge USA logo. Like, at least with War of the Worlds, they had a logo with a badge and it looked kind of professional. Now that they changed the name and everything, it just looks like, okay, well, we just had to change it on the fly. We really didn't think this one out. I, I think we put War of the Worlds for like a, a just a placeholder. And then because they announced it so quickly, they just kind of threw it out there, which is dumb. You gotta really, you really gotta take your time, especially if you're trying to put together four seasons of the same kind of show with different competitors. Like you gotta take your time to really think this through. Um, so I, I'm going to be watching this. I'm gonna to try to be as judicial as possible. I will be rooting for certain players and I wanna see what these players can do on a challenge like season. My hopes for it are just not that high. So we're gonna to have to wait and see, see if they can prove me wrong kind of deal and maybe they can, hopefully they can. But it's just funny to hear 
Tyson on his own podcast taking shots and the season hasn't even aired yet. They barely aired a teaser to show like a couple of different like players running, players working together on certain challenges. There's an elimination where there's a tank of water. But other than that, we have no other information just yet. Uh, but I do think that this cast will be revealed very, very soon. I'm thinking like either the first or second week of June because then it'll be a month for them to prep and put out a trailer and get everybody excited, put it at the front and back of everything uh, that they're going to be putting on to CBS to get everybody drummed up and hyped for it, especially with the Big Brother going to be announcing probably very soon. And then, boom, when it hits July, that's when it's going to drop everything. So it's going to be very, very interesting uh, what could happen. But I don't know. I, I, I did admit when all this news was announced that I was a lot more excited for the other spinoffs from the other countries like uh, UK and Australia. Like, I'm excited to see what those players can bring because we haven't gotten one, a lot of great competitors from Australia just yet. And the UK is just always messy. So I'm very much looking forward to them. We've seen all the players play their own seasons here in the USA with the challenge USA players. I'm not thrilled. <laughs> we kind of have seen the way they've played their own seasons and kind of get an idea of like their personalities or how they play the game. So I'm not like, all that excited to know what like possibilities of like who will work together, who will try to snake who, and how will this turn out? It's like we've kind of seen it already. So I'm more looking forward to the unpredictability and the mystery of the other spinoffs instead of the some of the cast or half the cast of the Challenge USA players. All right, let's go over one last bit of news that has happened this week. So Shane uh, from the challenge. The last time we saw him was the challenge 32 final reckoning where he was partnered up with Nelson. He took to Instagram posting up, uh, somebody asking if he was going to return to the challenge very soon. And he put out on, uh, he put out a post on his story saying, I get this question a lot from fans of the challenge and I usually avoid letting people know, but here you go. And so he goes into this long explanation on why he hasn't been asked or why he probably won't be on in the near future. And what he tells this uh, fan of the challenge saying, unfortunately not, I have to officially apologize for calling out their misogyny that is present in the show and in casting on IG, which I refuse to do so they won't even consider me until that time. It's a weird power trip by the women in charge because since they are women, in quotes, they take it personally, even though it's resulted in an investigation and firing, LOL. A hill I'm glad to die on in the name of progress. So on Instagram story about, I want to say two years ago, at least that's what it shows on some of the Reddit posts of his other rants that he had. But he is called out production saying that they hire women just to be stirring up the drama and to be hookup pieces and side pieces for the show. And the men get all the hero talk and hero worship because they get to do the challenges and they're shown as the heroes while the women are just shown as side pieces as he went on to call them. And then apparently there was an article that was put out uh, by one of the production members that Shane calls out for letting all the misogyny happen and condoning it and putting it out there for the for the sake of entertainment and they called Shane uh crazy or try to say that he was misinformed and then Shane went on to response oh god guys MTV is trying me so now I got to come back because that person that I talked about before a long time ago the one person who is kind of in charge of everyone when it comes to casting, that executive producer person I've mentioned once before. The real fans know who her name is. She went ahead and released an Apple News article doing her best to make it seem like I deleted my Instagram story like I was embarrassed by it. I wasn't embarrassed by it. And second, using quotes from Redditors, not even real fans, Redditors don't understand the show real fans are on bevmo first off and second you're getting lit up on twitter mtv because you are exposed so just because you've got a apple tv news article saying that i was crazy and acting passionate but i was wrong doesn't mean i was wrong right if i was wrong 
Open up how you cast. Open up how you make your casting decisions. Let people hear the calls that go out when they are asked, are you single? What are you going to do for us? Open that up, all right? That's, that's how you prove I'm wrong. You show the people how you cast the show. So that was Shane's response about being called out in their uh, Apple TV a review of what he originally said, which again, I can't find it. I'm really sorry about that, but he 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 goes into it a little bit in that review. Uh, so he talks about casting. Uh, how does MTV cast? I would like to know as well. Um, this again was like two years ago. I found this. Uh, it said two years ago on the Reddit post that I found this on. And so I, along with a lot of other people, question casting decisions by MTV. I mean, we've been questioning them for years on this. But Shane talks about in his response to this fan stating like, hey, are you ever going to come back onto the show kind of thing? And he says that he's standing up and willing to die on a hill because of the misogyny that is on the show. It's just, to me, the last time, the last memories that I've had of Shane on the show is him attacking Dave on, calling her names. Insane and a bitch. If you think that I did that for First me. First of all, I you're not gonna call me a bitch. We're not I gonna just do did. that. He get to call me a bitch? Why? What, I'm not allowed yeah, to speak language to you because you're a girl? Like, you're not allowed to call me a bitch. You mean like bitch? You what? I'd be a bigger bitch than you ever could be. No yeah, you are pretty big. Yeah, and I am. Mom, yeah. And I am. Are you trying to call me fat? I guess. He then apologized within the show saying like, oh, I apologize, Dave Vaughn, for doing that. Like, I was just in the heat of the moment. And then he has a confessional going like, I'm just gonna say whatever I can to make her think that we are friends. We've all called each other names and stuff like that. So, the apology tour begins. I'm gonna say whatever the I want to you to make you think that we're friends, but I'm gonna you over. You are going to stand up against misogyny while you call another woman and demean another woman on the show and call her names and attack her on the show. And that's gonna be one of your last fleeting memories on the show in a lot of the fans' eyes. Shane, to me, reminds me a bit of Pauly in the fact that I don't think we're gonna really see either of them back on the show anytime soon, yet they are willing to just keep on bringing up a show that they have been on over and over and over again to maybe stay relevant, to maybe keep their names in everybody's minds that have watched them at one point on the show. I agree with Shane on that there is something wrong with the casting on the show in some aspects. And I agree with him that the misogyny on the show that we have seen prevalent on the show needs to be handled. But I also think that it's like backhanded coming from Shane who we've seen be pretty abrasive to not only the women, but also the men. And then thinking back to one of the last memories I have of Shane is attacking Dave Vaughn and calling her a bitch over and over and over again, and then apologizing for it and then it not meaning anything. But we'll see what happens. Hopefully we'll see some change happening within the challenge come this upcoming season and beyond but we're gonna have to wait and see what's gonna happen there but that is it for this episode of the challenge war of the words podcast thank you so much for watching this video and i want to give a special shout out thank you to everyone who supports me over at patreon.com slash angel cake bids thank you for your support thank you for your generosity i really really appreciate it and thank you to everyone who is watching this up to this point Thank you, thank you, thank you. What do you think about the Challenge 38 pause? What do you think about Tyson's comments and throwing shade? Do you actually think he was throwing shade at the Challenge USA that's going to be coming out? Or do you think he was just stating how glad and positive he is on Survivor's Challenge Makers? Let me know down in the comment section below. And are you excited for the Challenge USA? And have you seen the cast list? Who are you rooting for? Are you rooting for Tyson? And let me know what you think about Shane's comments. And would you like to see Shane back on an upcoming season of The Challenge or Challenge All-Stars? Let me know anything and everything you thought down in the comments section below. I want to hear what you have to say. But thank you so much for watching. And I'll see y'all next time. Peace.
Five, five.